The Conservative Animal Welfare Foundation was established in 2016 to raise awareness on the lives of billions of animals reared on intensive farms around the world and how this impacts upon animal welfare, the environment and people's health. We want to highlight the action people can take to help advance farm animal welfare. Thank you Lorraine for inviting me to say a few words and thanks also for the amazing work that you do. But first I want to reiterate that we're proud to have some of the highest animal welfare standards in the world and that we're fully committed not only to protecting those standards, including in our future trade agreements, but to strengthening them wherever we can. Animal welfare is a mark of a civilised society and of course ending the live export for slaughter and fattening of animals, a campaign that this organisation in many respects has been leading. I warmly welcome the work of the Conservative Animal Welfare Foundation campaigning for better treatment of animals in our country. We have some of the highest standards in the world, but there's further we can go. So alongside the Animal Welfare Foundation, I am campaigning for an end to live exports for slaughter or fattening. Leaving the European Union gives us a chance to crack down on this trade, and I want to see that happen. But I also want to see cages phased out for egg laying chickens, and, in, and to improve the welfare of pigs, I think it's important that we see free farrowing systems start to replace farrowing crates. So there is a way to go to improve the welfare of farmed animals in our country and I'm determined to see that progress made. Billions of farm animals are reared for food each year. In our age we have seen the increasing spread of industrial farming. Intelligent, sentient beings are crammed into squalid cages and crates in dark sheds hidden away, unable to exhibit their natural behaviours, deprived of ever seeing the sun, the stars, feel the wind or a blade of grass beneath their feet. For many people, including many supporters of the Conservative Animal Welfare Foundation, one of the great advantages of leaving the European Union was going to be that we would be able to extricate ourselves from European Union regulations that meant that we had to allow the importing into the United Kingdom of animal products that would never have been permitted in the UK. And those products, of course, undercut our own farmers' work. It was also going to be an opportunity to bring to an end once and for all the transport of live animals for slaughter, something that again we couldn't do under EU regulations. The abhorrence of live animal exports for slaughter and fattening has gone on for far too many decades. Now we have left the European Union and the Brexit transition period comes to an end on New Year's Eve, we can end this horrendous export and I encourage this Conservative government to add to its animal welfare credentials and do so. Scientists have proven that animals are sentient beings that suffer pain, fear and stress, as well as joy and comfort. Practices that are still being used today fail to appreciate animals' needs and their capacity to suffer, resulting in a large number of sentient animals being subject to pain. It is vital that we protect our animals by recognising animal sentience in United Kingdom law. Every year, tens of thousands of animals are exported from the United Kingdom, where they suffer long journeys for slaughter and fattening. Animals are transported in cruel and in human conditions causing extreme stress, exhaustion, hunger and dehydration. Let's have a new golden thread to run throughout UK legislation to protect the millions of animals who look to us for protection. We want to see all public authorities bound by law to pay attention to animal welfare needs as sentient beings when implementing public policy and to protect 
and to commit to protect them as fellow creatures deserving of respect. Within the United Kingdom, pigs, hens and game birds are kept in cages that confine and restrict their movements. And this prohibits them pursuing their nat natural animal instincts. Currently, 50% of the half a million sows in the UK are kept in small metal farrowing crates where they cannot move or turn around. Pigs are highly intelligent animals and these cages very cruelly restrict a sow's strong instinct to build a nest before giving birth to piglets. It is completely unacceptable that farm animals in the United Kingdom have to endure such dreadful conditions. Last October we made a set of proposals to the National Food Strategy Review and these centred on institution of a mandatory animal welfare labelling system. We propose that all products that contain animal uh, components consumed or produced in the United Kingdom should be subject to mandatory animal welfare labelling. With the exception of eggs, there is currently no legal requirement to label products with information on how the animals are reared. As more and more shoppers have an interest in where their food actually originates, there should be mandatory and clear labelling which allows consumers to make informed choices. Where method of production labelling exists as it does with eggs, it is popular with consumers. Labels are the only real tool that consumers have to communicate their preference for higher welfare products to producers. Labels empower us to drive standards more effectively and to reward farmers who invest in better farm animal welfare. Why does it matter? Consumers' growing interest in how animals are treated on farms and in livestock facilities has created a strong demand for further information. Animal welfare is an increasing concern amongst the general public who frequently look to government to take the lead in both maintaining and improving standards. The truth is that while progress is being made, we could be doing a lot more to improve animal welfare. We urge for the UK to champion a global wildlife trade ban, not only to end the senseless cruelty inflicted on billions of animals caught up in this cruel system, but to protect fragile ecosystems, public health and the global environment we live in. People are speaking out to protect our natural world, our endangered species, and so they should, because we've already lost half the animals on the planet, denying future generations of ever seeing some species as a result of our own greed and inaction. Poachers slice off the faces of live rhinos to steal their horns. Militia groups use helicopters to shoot down elephants for their tusks. Factory farmers breed captive tigers to marinate their bones for wine. Future generations will condemn us if we don't take further action now to stop this despicable madness and obscene cruelty. We have a moral obligation to protect vulnerable species for future generations who will not be able to see or experience species which so many of us take for granted today. Protesters around the world are taking a stand on the escalating climate crisis. The climate emergency is the defining issue of our times. The UK will host the COP26, a vital UN climate summit where countries must come up with strengthened commitments to cut greenhouse gas emissions. We can all contribute meaningful, significant changes to help advance animal welfare, combat climate change and protect our planet right now in our own homes by the choices we make every day with our diets. We can choose high welfare produced meat and dairy. We can choose free range eggs and shun eggs produced from the poor animals incarcerated in the misery of cramped cages. We can support the UN objective to reduce meat consumption to help protect our planet. A report from the United Nations adds to the increasing numbers of calls from scientists in recent years that drastic changes to the world's diet are needed in a bid to stop global warming. 
The report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says switching to plant-based diets could both free up land and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Sir David Attenborough recently stated that we must change to a diet that is largely plant-based, which will reduce the space we need for farming and reduce greenhouse gases. Precious ancient rainforests in the Amazon are now being cleared away for lucrative cattle pastures. Burning is commonly used to clear trees quickly. We have all watched in horror as terrible fires tear through the Amazon rainforest. Petrified wild animals flee in terror for their lives and have lost their ancient habitats just so more cattle can be produced instead. We now have to stop and take stock of what is going on around us and each and every one of us has a responsibility and a duty to help leave our planet in a better condition for those generations that follow us. We are better than this. Please support our campaigns to stop these cruel and totally unnecessary practices. As human beings, blessed with the most wonderful planet, let's recognise these animals for the sentient beings that they are. Let's move forward together to find better ways to find a solution and resolve this situation.